Dark Souls has a reputation of being a challenging game, but for every Souls game, there's at least one easy boss. Pinwheel for Dark Souls 1, Rick for Elden Ring, and the folding screen monkeys in Sekiro. For Dark Souls 3, I consider Deacons of the Deep to be one of those easy bosses. With my special set of skills acquired from speedrunning, I wanted to see how fast I could die to Deacons. The special set of glitches will be linked in the description for anybody interested. The unedited VOD without commentary of this run can also be found in the description. Keep in mind, most of these glitches have been patched out as I am playing on version 1.04, regulation 1.05. With that out of the way, let us see how fast I can die to Deacons of the Challenging. I start where any run begins, Character Creation. The two important things picked here are the Starting Class and Burial Gift. The Assassin class is picked for the spell Spook that I will use for two glitches later in the run, like Firebombs for the Burial Gift because they do fire damage. And that is all. After waking up in a coffin, can't believe this game copied Elden Ring, I strip to the nude for speed. I pick up the Ashen Flask while avoiding the enemies. These basic enemies are easy to strafe around. Even the arrows can be easily strafed. I continue on towards the required tutorial boss, Gundir. Gundir sets the tone for new players, but I'm going to combo him to death. After pulling the sword from his chest, I hit him 5 times while he gets up. This is doing reduced damage, but he is still taking the full poise damage. Gundir has 185 poise, and the S-Dog does 15 poise damage. I count my hits, and once I get to 12 hits, I know I have done 180 poise damage to him. I regain my stamina and hit Gundir to stagger him. This is followed by 2 more hits, and finishes with a black firebomb. This lowers his remaining health by over half, and leads into his second phase. The second phase has a long animation where I can damage him. I two-hand the S-Dock and perform one heavy attack before moving out of the way. I chuck two more firebombs at Gundir, finishing him off, allowing me to head to Firelink. I quit out while opening the door. This is done as I am timing this run with in-game time, what the save file says. The animation for opening doors eats away at this time, but just quitting out while opening the doors gives the animation saving some time. At Firelink, I ignore the woman and put the coiled sword into the shrine bonfire. I do this as an alpha move, and totally not because I am a loser. The animation is long, but I can menu while doing it, so I put the dark sign on my hotbar for later. Once the animation has finished, I warp to the high wall of Lothric. Most of this area is useless to me except for one pickup. I run around the dead wyvern to drop off this ledge to a hidden area. I pick up this item while falling to cancel the pickup animation before continuing on to the alive wyvern. This area sucks when trying to speed past everything because past these archers is a gank squad. I already get ganked enough in PvP and I prefer not to get ganked by NPCs as well. This time they decide to be pretty docile and I use the Dark Souls 3 dodges to my advantage. It is not over yet as I stay to the right of this door trying to bait this Lothric Knight to not block the door. I quickly run to the left and dodge his attacks before dropping down. Coming up, I'm going to be performing a Spook quit out. When you die from falling with Spook active, the damage is not applied right away and it also stores the position where you hit the ground. Normally this stored position won't matter as when you die you are brought back to the last bonfire rested. However, quitting out after hitting the ground and before the damage is applied negates the damage being dealt. I cast Spook and jump off the roof while preparing the quit out. The timing is super lenient with an audio cue of the character screaming. Once I load back in, I'm at the bottom saving a little bit of time. I pick up this ember to use later and menu the gold pine resin into my hotbar. I make my way to Emma by just running past the knights. I'm gonna kill Emma with a firebomb and two heavy two-handed attacks. This is slower than just talking to her, but I want the thousand souls she gives from dying. I pick up the small Lothric banner in the basin of vows from her corpse before triggering the dancer boss fight. I did not need to do this, this is just an any percent speedrun habit and technically loses me time. I take a sip from my flask like an alcoholic detective before quitting out. This will put me outside the fight because boss arenas are considered unstable ground. Any ground considered unstable does not store your position, so my stored position is outside with the knights. I make my way to Vort where I will sort of combo him. I apply the gold pine resin, stay under him locked on, and just R1 spam. Ford has 1328 health and will transition to a second phase when his health is less than 60%. On the 9th or 8th hit if he took counter damage, he will phase transition. Like Gundir, he does this long animation where I punish with a R1 spam. 
Once done, Ford opens his second phase with recharging attacks, followed by his frost breath attack. The first two, I dodge into him, but the third, I dodge backwards. This puts me closer to him when he does his best Inglander impression. I one-up his impression by going over to his leg and stabbing him to death. Once he is dead, I move over to the giant door and prepare a quit out waiting for the air of fire destroyed text to appear. The large door takes server to open, so this quit out skips that animation. After loading back in, I lift the banner and get transported to the undead settlement. Most of the enemies are easy to avoid, but doormen stay strong. The peasant hollow in front did not come out far enough, so I had to quit out to reset them. Once I load back in, these guys are easy because rolling into them is enough to stagger them. I head across the bridge, moving towards the rocky path. I manage my stamina here to manipulate the hollow slave that drops down to my left. If I don't manage my sprinting here, when I go to cast spook, that hollow will hit me before I get the cast off. I roll through the fence to this lower section before jumping off down below. This skips a decent bit of the undead settlement and avoids annoying enemy placement. I am not heading to the exit yet as there is someone I need to talk to. With Spook still active, I drop down into this ravine and make my way into the rat room. Spook allows me to make it to the ladder without aggroing the rats before it runs out. The NPC I need is just up this ladder. I go and immediately touch this woman, but with her consent. She enjoyed me touching her so much that she teleports to Firelink where she will become a merchant. Now I can leave this place and perform my favorite speedrun strat at the elevator puzzle. I cast Spook at this depressed tile and run up the elevator. I fall down and spam roll to fall off to the area below. It saves some time, but also just looks cool. I pick up this ember guarded by the Outrider Knight and dodge past them. I then quit out on this door leading to the Road of Sacrifices. Road of Sacrifices has the last item I need, but it is guarded by two dogs. Dogs are notorious for just teleporting behind you. No, they really do teleport. I roll down towards this tree to land below where the weave dogs are located. I pick up the Braille Divine Tome of Karam and manage to dodge the dogs. I run away from this nightmare towards the halfway fortress. Luckily the dogs don't chase me too hard, so I can light the bonfire before warping the Firelink Shrine. At the Shrine Handmaiden, I sell the two embers in Fort Soul so I can do some shopping. I run out of dialogue range towards Arene of Karam. I give her the tome, learn the Tears of Denial Miracle, and purchase the Saints Ring. I then dark sign to the Shrine Bonfire instead of walking like a true American. I equip the Saints Ring to increase my entombment slots, rest at the bonfire to attune Tears of Denial, and then warp back to the Halfway Fortress. I make my way back into the Road of Sacrifices with everything I need to break the game. I roll off, landing on this rock below and quit out. The quit out is to remove the death cam that was activated when I fell down. The death cam is that cinematic overhead cam when falling to your death. This can be useful, but here it would not be beneficial. I want to cast Tears of Denial, but I do not have enough faith or a talisman to cast it. A glitch called Spell Swap is used to cast the spell. I press left bumper up on the d-pad and left trigger at the same time. This will start the cast animation of Spook, but will cast Tears of Denial instead when done correctly. I know I did it right when I get that yellow glow and Tears of Denial buff. Now that I have the Tears of Denial buff, I'm going to perform the Teardrop glitch. Let me show the glitch and then explain it. I walk off the rock in this corner which should kill me, but instead I pass through the kill box. What is happening here? Well, when you fall to your death and avoid, two things happen. First, the death cam gets activated, but after that is a kill box that when you pass through, kills the character. I pass through the kill box that the effect Tears of Denial gives. When your health reaches zero, it prevents death by giving you 1 HP and removes the buff. Teardrop abuses this mechanic to allow us to pass through the kill box. The game gets a little confused and puts me into this weird state. My character model is gone, but we are also no longer affected by gravity. This is extremely useful as it allows us to go out of bounds and sequence break the game. This teardrop setup is using any percent skip all the way to ethereal, but this time I'm heading towards the Cathedral of the Deep. So I had to switch things up a bit and route a new path to follow. Dark Souls maps, even with how linear the game is, are very interconnected and make sense in the world. The cathedral is very high up, so I'm going to need to gain some height. An osteotomy is too expensive, so I will use the environment around me to gain height. I use this corner to lose some height so I can pass under this wall. I then run towards this tower that I want to use to align myself with the world. While I'm running on air, you should subscribe. And don't make me bring up the percent of you that are not subscribed. This is a fret. Unlike the death cam, I can still load in the world, but I have to actively touch a part of that area's environment. The tower does not have collision, so I can just phase into it. I will then use this middle pillar to align myself and run straight from it. This will load in the fair and keep perimeter so I can see what I'm doing. I have enough elevation that I can avoid enemies like this black knight down below. I will pass through some windows leading back into the crucifixion woods. I get invaded by Hazel, but eventually my natural scent will scare her away. 
I use this cliff face here to get enough height to go out of bounds, but the boss arena of Crystal Sage is deloaded. Don't worry because I routed this out, so I know to circle back around and hit this rock face. This will load the arena for me. I can easily just skip the Wicked Witch of the West when defying gravity by walking to the left of the fog wall. I'm still at a nice height where the enemies are not a concern until I get to this staircase. I could go the normal way of the Horde of Archers and even worse, dogs. But I spent the time to set up Teardrop, so I'm going to use all of this Teardrop. I head to the area on the right to gain some altitude and bounds before slipping a little bit out of bounds. I run up this line of rocks, gaining as much height as possible before running to the left. There are a lot of trees in the way, but they will clear up soon, showing this little area. Just beyond this little area is another little area where I'm going to run against this sloped cliff face to climb up it. I am now back in bounds, skipping that toxic section. It is most likely faster to do it normally, but being two shots away with dogs that teleport. Yeah, I'm not that much of a masochist. I run past the hollow spring to the Estes Shard. We've all been there. I'm going to be climbing up onto the roof up ahead, but not all of it has collision. On the left side, there's collision about a pixel wide that I'm going to run up. It is hard, okay? Don't judge me for failing a little bit. Once I get up, thankfully the upper roof has collision that I use to gain height. I run over to this large flying buttress heading around to the other side to avoid the enemy archers. I then run up its side, stopping here to let an archer shoot me. The reason for this is because I can't open menus in this state until I have gained HP or lose the Tears of Denial buff. It is a minor time save for a quit out later, but that is speed running. I continue on the normal way of the scariest part coming up. I'm literally one, so I need to dodge every enemy attack. I get past this grave warden to make a dash towards the door. When opening the door, I'm f***ing invincible. Once the animation is over, I can start taking damage again. I could perform a quit out to reset the enemies, but doing so will lose teardrop. I still have some use for it, so once again I have to dodge the grave warden's attacks. I manage to get by and float above the cathedral. With teardrop, I can head to where Pat Siegward waits, skipping a majority of the interior section. Over here is a shortcut elevator where I sip my ashen flask and quit out. This will remove the teardrop glitch, but also give me enough focus points to cast Spook. I use Spook to drop down the elevator and sprint towards the deacons. I enter the boss fight and let RNGs Jesus take the wheel. The first attack I get misses me, but eventually one of the deacons hits me. The time is stopped on the load screen giving me an end game time of 15 minutes and 28 seconds. I also timed the real time attack, which was 18 minutes and 2 seconds. With this, I feel confident saying I hold the world record for the fastest death to Deacons of the Deep. Guinness, I will be waiting on my certificate, just like how I'm waiting for you to subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for wasting your time with me.